morning and welcome back to Create, Share, Inspire podcast. This is episode 849. I'm, 849. I'm Kristen Amdahl and we're here live in Southwest Florida in my studio and baby Bjorn needed some extra TLC this morning so he was trying to climb up on me in my dress and I had to go grab my robe so that he wouldn't hurt me um, and he wasn't taking no for an answer so I figured it was going to be more on more awkward to do the podcast uh, with him begging me for this than to just let him go. So I'm going to be in my robe for a minute. As soon as uh, Bjorn gets his fill, I'll take my robe off and look normal again. <laughs> Happy Friday, everybody. Hi, Thea and Lisa, Julie, Leona, Judy, Grace, Debbie. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. Hope everybody's doing well. <laughs> Baby Bjorn said, I don't care what time it is. Hi, Suzanne. He says, I don't care if it's podcast time. I need some loving. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Barb. And it's just so fun. Hi, Jody. Uh, it's, he's aggressively needy. Like when he needs me, there's no stopping him. <laughs> Hi, Pamela. Good morning. Hi, Judy and Christine. <laughs> oh. Little baby's got his nose buried all the way in there. Hi, Francis. Good morning. So as you can see, we are in my studio today. I wanted to talk about some fun ways to uh, look at the Blake Crochet Sampler Afghan as more than what the pattern even provides. And there's lots of different ways that we can talk about, lots of different ways that we can talk about how to mod modify the pat pattern. Um, yes, Kathy, both of my... Both of my cats are male, and did you say uh, uh, they're both male? They're both brothers from the same litter, and I adopted them uh, after they were found, after being found dying in a box in a McDonald's parking lot. This month is their seventh birthday and seventh year with us. It's part of our family, very special for us. Hi, Gail and Kathy. <laughs> you about done, buddy? Anyway, uh, <laughs> I'll just keep talking. Um, so you're familiar with the, the Blake Sampler Afghan, of course. This is a new pattern that I released very recently in Be So Easy Yarn, which is my new number five bulky weight yarn. We've had a video series for this particular pattern going all week. We've been live premiering each video. Today will be part seven of seven of the video tutorials, and it will live premiere right after the podcast, so it'll start right at 9.30. Hi, Norma. And in that last video, I will be showing you how to join the motifs together, which is a wonderful technique if join as you go is something that's a little too complicated for you. Doesn't mean it'll be too complicated for you forever, but if you're new to crocheting, it might seem complicated. And there is some there, there are some pluses and minuses to everything, right? When you do a crochet join stripe between motifs, you're actually creating a piped edging and it's an opportunity to use a color contrast even or get a textural component to it. So I think you're gonna really enjoy that aspect of this video. <laughs> yeah, crocheting with kitties. Yeah, Bjorn's busy this morning. <laughs> Poor baby. Poor baby, he needed some extra loving. Hi, Marianne. <laughs> I'll, I'll get, I'll get, I'll put my, I'll have my regular colors on when he's on. I don't know, maybe I'll end up doing the whole podcast in my robe. Who knows? Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, so there are six motifs in this pattern, and those six motifs, I designed them specifically to all end on the same stitch count at the last round. So each side of each square has 27 stitches and a chain three space in each corner. So it's 27, chain three corner, 27 stitches, chain three corner, 27 stitches, chain three corner, 27 stitches, chain three corner. So what does that mean? That means you can mix and match them any way you want. You could just match all of them by themselves, or you could join them together with any of the other six, whether you mix and match all six like I did. Are we done, buddy? Are we done? You big boy now? You ready to get down? No, not yet. <laughs> and if I put him down, he's just going to pop back up. So, <laughs> oh, poor baby. You big boy now? I think you're a big boy. 
I'm feeling some big boy body language. Yeah? All right, why don't you go, buddy? Okay. <laughs> okay. Take that off. And I can start showing you what I wanted to show you. So thank you for indulging baby Bjorn. I appreciate it, and he does too. So even so there are six different motifs here. And each of those six motifs I worked in one color and they worked it in multicolors. So it gives you so much variety. But let's say that uh, you want something bigger than this, okay? There's a couple of ways not only one, but there's a couple of ways you could make a bigger project with this. And I'm going to show you some easy math. Whoa! Well, there we go. And I'm going to show you some easy math for figuring out how much yarn you need for any size that you would want to make. So it's just some rough, rough estimate kind of math, nothing major. It would help to have a calculator. Let's see if I, now that I'm in my office, I actually have access to a calculator outside of my phone. So let me go over here and I'll pull it up. Grab a pen. Oh, this is my dry eraser for this one. I'm getting organized with some other stuff and very excited to be using that right now. Anyway, okay, so this particular afghan to make 12 motifs, four by three. I mean, it's not a huge, mo it's not a huge afghan, right? It's more of a lapgan. Um, a, an amazing wrap if you were sitting outside at a fire pit, it would be great as a shawl or a poncho if you pinned it at the top. So you can wear it a couple of ways and it's also a lapgan size afghan. It'd be beautiful to across the edge of your bed, over the back of your couch. But let's say you wanted to make a bigger blanket so this particular size with 12 squares, right, we have 12 motif squares, takes eight balls of yarn. But be so easy. Okay, so I'm going to divide the 12 and the 8. If you were wanting to do this by yardage, if you were wanting to also you know, substitute a different yarn, then you would instead go by how much yardage you used, okay? So it would be eight times 145. It's 145 yards per ball, so it's 1160. So you divide your 12 squares into 1160 yards to figure out how many yards on average you're using per ball. And the reason why we're taking the overall yardage is that a percentage of this yardage is used for joining the motifs together and a percentage is used for the um, for the edging. So it's a minimal edging, it's minimal, but it's still, it's part of the collective. So if you divide it by how many squares you have, you'll get a rough estimate of how much yardage you're using per square overall in a motif blanket that's also joined and also edged. So we're going to uh, divide, hold on, we're going to divide both of them, hold on, I, I'm about to do this backwards. Or to, okay, we want to know how many balls each square is, so we want to bring this down to one square. So we're dividing both sides by 12, and so I, I'll do the math, but ultimately it's going to be uh, three, quarter, three quarters of a ball, okay? So you do, divide eight by four is, no, it's two thirds, sorry, two thirds. Eight over 12 goes down to two over three, okay? Or 0.67 balls per motif square. Okay, so based on this size, I'm gonna to try to get this back up here. I want you to be able to see it while I'm talking. Okay, Got a little room here, little room here. Okay, so 12 squares This is our 12 squares, it's eight balls of yarn. 
and we figured out the math to know that we're using two thirds of a ball of yarn per square. So somebody give me a different size afghan. Um, pick a number. Do you want to see a 16, a 16 motif? Do you want to see a 20 motif? We could do five by four. We could do five by five, 25 um, motif. Pick a, just pick a number and I will, first person to pick a number and I'll figure out the how much balls. Sand shells is 20. Okay, so 20 could be done in a, let's see, 20 would be five times four. So let's, we, we can do this easy. So now we've got five times four is 20 balls. Whoops, 20 motifs. <laughs> Okay, they're roughly a 12 inch square each. So that would be one, two, three, four, five. This would be roughly five feet by four feet, a much bigger afghan. I can pick another number too if somebody said they wanted another number. So we could do, so now it's 20.67 balls per motif. So 20 motifs times 0.67, and I've got a calculator here, so I'll do it. is 13.4 balls. All right, so anytime something ends up being not even, we've got to round up, right? You can't use less than a whole ball. You can always add, you can't, you're never gonna finish your afghan if you only bought 13 balls. So anytime that number is greater than a whole number, you will have to round up to one more. So it would be 14 balls, 20 motif afghan. Okay, so I think there were a couple other requests. We'll do one more bigger one. So someone said 25 and someone said 24. Let's do the 25. So for 25 motifs, which would be a nice big square of five. Okay, I know my lines aren't straight, but that's okay. Five motifs by five motifs is 25 times point six seven balls per motif. You don't need to do it by hand. You've got a calculator on your phone and on your laptop. This would be 16.75 balls, which we would round up to 17 balls. And we'd round that one up to 14 balls. Does that make sense? Does anybody want me to explain that a little more? This is actually pretty easy math, but I understand math is not everybody's strong suit. So let's see if anybody has any questions about what I've said so far. I'm getting a couple of got it's. That's great. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Great, Joe says it makes perfect sense too, wonderful. Now this one just happened to work out really well with the eight and the 12 being um, easy numbers coming down to two thirds, but a two thirds fraction is not as easy to figure out uh, math wise and that's why it's much easier to convert it to a decimal so that you can use it by, um, so that you can use it by, um, on a calculator. Decimals end up being much easier than fractions if you're going to do things on your phone with a calculator. Uh, how do you separate by colors? That's a little trickier, Julie, um, but it can still be like the, the estimate is a little more rough, but it can definitely be done. And so, for example, these eight balls were um, one each of six colors and two each of the final color, but anybody could choose however many balls they want to make something in. So if you were, let's say, what's a nice even number here? Uh, well, let's do a different kind of math then, okay? Let's say, let's say you're going to do something, a project that is 20 balls, okay? Let's say you're gonna do something that's 20 balls and you want to evenly divide it by four or five colors. Well, four colors, would be evenly divided into five balls each, right? Five colors would be four balls each. 
and let's say what else um, two colors would be 10 balls each 2 times 10 is 20 5 times 4 is 20 4 times 5 is 20 so now let's talk about do I have more room down here can you see this yeah so let's say we're doing the original design of one ball each two uh, six colors and two balls one color okay the only really easy way to do that one is starting with our original squares i'm going to draw in red now our original squares that were one two three oh, one two one one two three one two three four so if we start with that original 12 it, multiplying this is the easiest way to do it so um if you're going to make instead of 12 squares bump that up to 24 squares then you're going to order double the yarn bump it up to 36 squares and then you're going to bump it up to uh it, then it, if you doubled it it would it would be two balls of each six colors if you tripled it it would be three two balls doubled would be four and two balls tripled would be six so what does that actually mean as far as blanket sizes so a 24 inch motif could be uh could be done in a number of ways. It could be six times four, it could be eight times three. And then that 36 motif that I set, suggested, that could be, so 24 could be six times four or eight times three, 12 times two. And then 36 motifs, you've actually got a lot more options there. It would be three times 18 or four times nine uh, five doesn't really work well, but you could do a five by, by seven and just have a little yarn left over and you could do a six by six. Do you see what I did there? Because seven times five is 35, um, I thought it would be, even if you just did your rough math for tripling the yardage, you'd still just have a little yarn left over from one extra motif, 0.67 balls left over, and you could still get a really nice size of a five by seven. So, and that would be using most of those 36 balls. And again, this is rough estimate math. So it's possible you could need a little more or a little less when you're doing that. Um, Salsa wants to know if we are making an afghan, what size is each square? They are 12 inch squares. The pattern is available on my website and I've been doing video tutorials for it all week. Today, I'm just talking about different ways that you could use this pattern to modify it into making other things. Yes, I'm talking about modifying it, Salsa. So yes, the original is 12 inches. I'm talking about different ways that you could make variations to this pattern if you wanted to change anything about the original design. The actual design is very detailed and written out in written form along with detailed charts on my website and there are video tutorials that go step by step through how to make the squares and how to join them together. Yes, Julie, figuring out the double or triple is much easier than figuring out some of the other nuanced sizes. But it's all here, it's all available, so depending on your um, level of enthusiasm about math, I'm not saying it's based on your skill. Some people are good at things and still don't like it, and vice versa. So depending on your, you know, how much you want to figure things out, the very easiest way would be to double or triple the uh, number of squares. And as you can see, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. They could end up becoming a lot of different shapes and sizes. So really easy to figure out that if you're going to go by color or if you want to figure it out just by yardage in general and then just pull whatever colors you want, then this simpler section up here works as well. Um, lots of information here though. If you have any other questions, please let me know. Otherwise, I have another kind of variation, variation to share with you too that you're just not even gonna believe it. It's amazing. <laughs> it makes me sound like I'm patting myself on my back. I don't really mean that, but it is amazing. So you may notice I have a different water jug today. It's by that same amazing company, Iron Flask, that I found on Amazon. But that big one, the 64 inch size, I was finding that it was so heavy that I was worried I was gonna hurt my teeth by missing my mouth. 
I know it happens. And, and Marlon thought that it was a great size for work. So I said, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you this one for work since uh, he, he spends a lot of time outside. And I bought the 32 ounce size for myself and I got it in another colorway. So this is called their Cool Waves, I think. It goes from like a turquoise to a dusty, smoky blue, very, or like a denim blue. Definitely my colors and a more manageable size for uh, aiming into my mouth. Isn't that terrible? Does anybody else have that issue? Do you ever worry about banging your teeth on the uh, on the hard straw on these bottles? Okay. All right. Are there any other questions about this then? You do too, Joe. Yeah. Yeah, I, so I felt like a little lighter might be bad. It's not like I, it's not like it's going to be that much trouble to fill it up a couple more times throughout the day. Um, so yeah, this size feels a lot more manageable. This is the size I got my mom for Mother's Day and she loves it. I keep forgetting I don't have to tilt it up because it's got a straw in there. Um, All right, I don't see any of the questions about this. Great information though, possibly something I should write down somewhere else. I do keep all of these. If we ever need to go back to any of these, just so you know, I keep all of these sheets and all of these pads that we've used here. Okay, are you ready for the next exciting part? Uh, I am so excited. So there's a couple reasons why I did what I did on these squares. So let's just call this any, this could be A, B, C, D, E or F. They're all done the same way. There is a chain three corn on the last round of each motif. And I'm going to get a little designy for a minute because those of you that are interested in design will find this fascinating as well. I manipulated the different rows, the different height of each row. You'll notice that not all the motifs are the same number of rounds. Some of them are five, some of them are six. But, they all, but because I took into consideration the height of the stitches and the correct rate of increase, I was able to end each round on the same number of stitches. So for example, um, let me show you two examples. One of them ends on a round of treble crochet and one of them ends on a round of single crochet. This motif ends on a round of single crochet and this one here ends on a round of treble crochet and they're not the same number of rounds but because some stitches are short and some are long I was able to design it to work out perfectly so that every single round no matter what stitch is there is 27 stitches across each side and chain three corners in each corner. Now, what's really wonderful about having that be a multiple of three is if you wanted to do a chain three single crochet mesh round around each of your motifs, then you could join them as you go to the other motifs. Do you understand what I'm saying about that? I'm gonna stop and make sure you understand that first because there's more, but wait, there's more. <laughs> Yes, understand? Okay, so I'll do that in red so, uh, so you could see you could actually, because it's a multiple of three, you could then do a chain three and join it to another motif with that chain three join, which is chain one, slip stitch, chain one. That's a possibility with this size motif. Also, you can mix and match any of them to each other. It doesn't, you don't have to do motif A next to motif B or motif D next to motif A. They all match well. Now, as you're crocheting, if your if your motifs look a little wavy as you as you're finished working them and you haven't quite yet joined them, it's possible that you might just want to steam them a little bit or block them just a little bit just so the uh, stitches relax a little bit, then it is easier to crochet along those sides as well. However, there's another thing that we can do here. You could make any of these motifs bigger if you wanted. As long as you did the same number of motifs and the same rate of increase from this point, they will all still be identical. Or you could take any of the motifs and just increase it in any stitch pattern you like 
the easiest would be to continue on in double crochet with the, the corners, uh, but you could have it where this would be the lace focal point in the center of just a solid stitch afghan. So what do I mean by that? So on that last round, if you wanted to continue going, you would continue in this established pattern of one double crochet in each double crochet and figuring out what kind of corner you want in those chain three spaces. It could be a two double crochet, chain three, two double crochet, right? You could do that in each corner. Or if there's a different type of a corner you like, you could do that. Maybe you do five double crochets in the corner. Um, you could do whatever you want. Or if there's a stitch pattern that you know that works for an increasing stitch pattern, you could do that and just make an afghan from there. So you could use this as the starting point and make it bigger. Or if you wanted these borders to just be bigger around your squares and make the squares bigger, then you would work in this pattern for maybe a couple more rounds to make the squares bigger. And then as long as you did the same number of rounds from here, they would all line up so they would all have the same stitch count then. So let's say you wanted to use these motifs but make an afghan where the squares are 20 inch square and you only put a, a few less together. You could do that by continuing on in the double crochet plus corner uh, ratio, uh, ratio, no, uh, established pattern. Does that make sense? As long as you made sure they were the, had the same stitch count at the end of each round, they'll always perfectly line up. So let me show you. So if we did, so let's say you wanted to do a motif that was six squares then. But they were 24 inch squares. 24 inch squares is two feet. So this would still be six feet wide by um, four feet long. And that would be with six squares, but that's because each square is 24 inches. Just more options. Does anybody have any other questions about that? questions? The yarn used. This uses Be So Easy yarn, which is my number five uh, bulky weight yarn. This one right here. Uses Be So Easy yarn. It comes in 20 gorgeous colors and it's $6.99 a ball and you can find all of that on my website. You can also find the pattern with all the charts on my website and on the pattern page on my website you can also get links to the video tutorial playlist which is here on my youtube channel but it is linked there as well and if you're willing to stick around for a couple more minutes we're going to live premiere part seven of seven of the uh, motif the sampler motif afghan series and in this one, I will be showing you how we join the motifs together. So we're going to use single crochet and one chain and we're going to join them together. I really love it. And so here's another variation. Look at here it is in multicolor and here it is in one color. Totally different, but absolutely gorgeous, right? And in this one, I used a contrast color for the joining round to make it easier to see on camera. But can you imagine how pretty that would be all in one color as well? Uh, each ball, each ball of this yarn has 145 yards, 145 yards of number five bulky weight yarn that is super soft and drapey. I use, I usually use an eight or nine millimeter crochet hook and I usually use a nine or 10 millimeter knitting needle when I use this yarn. It works up very quickly and as you can see, it makes very, very soft projects. So soft and warm and cozy. Beautiful stuff. Okay, so we will be starting the preview or starting the live premiere in a couple minutes here. I am missing a book. Here we go. I'll grab this one. Wanted to share a quote with you still. Okay, wanted to share a quote with you still. Let's see. That might have been the last one. Oh, we finished volume one. Let's grab another one then. Okay. 
let's grab a quote from volume two. The first one is here, and here is from Aristotle. I love, the, I love these. Quality is not an act, it is a habit. That is so true. You have to, anything you want to make a regular part of your life, you have to put it in your life and keep it there until you develop a routine. Absolutely, just don't give up. These books are available on my website and they are also available on Amazon Prime all over the world. So this one is Aristotle. Thank you for the wonderful reminder. Quality is not an act, it is a habit. It is an intention, it is something we do mindfully. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your busy day to spend a few minutes here with me. Heads up, Monday is a holiday here in the US and I will not be broadcasting the uh, podcast on Monday, but we will be back Tuesday morning, hopefully back to the beach. And if, you're, if you have a few minutes and you'd like to join me for the live premiere of part seven of the Blake Sampler Afghan, we're gonna start that right now. Let us make time to create, share, and inspire today and every day. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye.